I thought it would be cool to make a short video on how to 3D model something using a free program called OpenSCAD. If you're a software engineer or somebody who's comfortable with coding and math, OpenSCAD is a really easy and intuitive way to model functional objects. Note that it's not great for artistic modeling though. I want to make an adapter for a patio umbrella so I can mount it in an aluminum square tube leg on my boat dock. I'm going to drill a hole through the square tube and umbrella pole at the bottom so I can pin the umbrella in place. I need something where the pole exits the top of the square tube so it doesn't flop around. This is where the custom adapter comes in. The 3D model and source code will be linked in the description below for those who either want to just make the same thing or modify it. Let's get started by making the bottom portion of the adapter using the cube function. It's called cube, but what it really means is cuboid because not all sides need to be the same size. From here on out, I'll just refer to cuboid as cube. Okay, cool, we have a cube rendered now. You can see that it's been rendered in positive coordinate space for X, Y, and Z. Many OpenSCAD functions support a parameter for centering objects within all three axes. I find that centering makes my code easier to reason about for symmetric objects, since position values are the same regardless of the side of the shape that you're looking at. The only thing that is different is the sign indicating positive and negative depending on the side of an axis that you are messing with. Now that I have the cube centered, you can see how it's symmetrical along each axis. For example, if I want to calculate the position of the edges on the x-axis, all I have to do is take the cube width and divide that by 2. Making that value positive will refer to the right side, and making it negative makes it refer to the left side. So far in this demo, I hard-coded the size values in the cube function. We're going to end up using these numbers and calculations for placement of additional shapes. Rather than duplicating these values every time we need to use them, I'm going to move them to variables that we can refer to as many times as we want. This gives us a single place to change these values if we need to, and it makes the code more readable. All of these values represent millimeters. Note that dimensions in OpenSCAD are actually unitless, but when you import your STL file into a 3D printing slicer, each STL unit ends up being interpreted as one millimeter. Now that we have our variables defined, we can replace the hard-coded values for our cube. I'll also add a few new lines here to make things easier to read. Note that every time you hit save, it updates the preview on the right. Okay, so let's add another cube for the lip that will be placed on top of the main adapter cube that we just created. First, we will compute some values for the size of this new cube. We will use the adapter width and depth as the starting point for the new cube. The only difference here is that we want to add the additional size that we defined in the lip size variable so that we get a cube that is wider than the main cube. Now we can define the lip cube using these values and our lip height variable, and we also want to center the cube. All right, check that out. We have our main cube and our lip cube being rendered at the same time. The only issue is that because we centered them both, the lip cube is inside the main cube. Before we start moving things around, let's take a second to change the color of our cubes so that we can better see what's going on. Now that we can clearly see things, let's move the lip cube so that it sits on top of the main cube. The first thing we need to do is calculate how far we need to move the lip cube along the z-axis. We know that only the top half of the blue cube exists in positive coordinate space, so we can get that amount by dividing the adapter height by 2. We also need to account for the bottom half of the lip cube being in negative coordinate space by adding the lip height divided by 2. We can move the lip cube by using the translate function which takes three parameters for x, y, and z. Since we only care about the z-axis, we will enter 0 for x and y, and then use our lip z offset value to tell it to move whatever is contained in the open curly braces up the z-axis by this value. Alright, now the lip is at the top of the blue cube. You can see what happens if I mess with the z offset calculation. Now the lip is too high and we have a gap between it and the blue cube. Now all we need to do is cut a hole down the center of both of these shapes to make a space for the umbrella pole. Before we can do that, we need to tell OpenSCAD that these two cubes should be treated as a singular object. We can accomplish this by using the group function. I'll add a little comment here to the closing curly brace to make it easier to see what's going on. Now that we have things grouped, we can use the difference function to subtract from this combined shape. The difference function works by treating the first item that is found after the curly brace as the shape to subtract from. Then any shapes that follow on the lines after are things that should be removed from that first shape. Since we want to cut a uniform hole through the center of the adapter, we can create a cylinder to do the subtraction. For the cylinder's height, we just need to specify something that's taller than the shape that we're removing from. To make things easy, I'll just use 2 times the adapter height value. For the diameter parameter, we can use our umbrella hole diameter variable that is defined up top. Just like when defining a cube, we will center the cylinder as well. Alright, there we go. Things are really shaping up. 
A nice feature that helps with debugging is that you can put the hash symbol in front of any object to cause it to be highlighted in the preview. This is particularly helpful when you're using the difference function and the objects you're drawing are not normally visible. You can also put an exclamation point before any object to hide all other objects and only render the one that you're referring to. Okay, our model is looking great. The last thing I want to do is round the corners so that it fits properly when I slide it into the square tube on my dock. I'm going to import a small library that I wrote for rounding the edges of cubes. I'll include this in the source code that is linked in the description below. There are likely better libraries than this that are available online, I just made this one for fun. Importing my library gives me access to a rounded cube function that I can use to replace the usages of the cube function. My library function takes the size parameters as separate arguments and an additional corner radius parameter. It also centers the produced cube by default. Awesome, you can see the blue cube and how it's rounded on the sides now. Now we can swap out the other cube function call below. There we go, everything's nicely rounded now. You'll notice that the rounded edges are a little blocky looking. By default, OpenSCAD doesn't render them smoothly because it's more expensive to process. We can change this by adding two special variables at the top of our code. This essentially just ensures that more facets are generated for arcs in your model. If you want to learn more, the OpenSCAD manual goes into more detail. Up until now, we've been rendering our model in preview mode. To export the model in a format such as STL, which is commonly used by 3D printers, you need to execute a render cycle by clicking on the button with an hourglass on it. Once you've rendered the model, you can click the STL button in the menu bar, or there are a whole bunch of other file format options available under File Export. For this project, I exported an STL file and imported that into a slicer called Cura. Here's what that looks like. The model imports in the same orientation that we designed it in. We want to flip it so the adapter lip is touching the print bed so that we don't have to print a bunch of support material because it's hanging in the air. Now that the orientation looks good, I can slice the model to generate the G-code that I can send to my 3D printer. Looks like this model will take 4 hours and 3 minutes to print with my current settings. Here's the umbrella adapter in action. I think it came out really well. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. It would be great to hear from people in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing more videos on OpenSCAD. Alright, thanks for watching.